Power BI just released seven new features January 2025. This video is going to get you up to date on all seven features, the key things that came out in 2025. So let's get into it. We're going to talk about enhancements to the new text slicer. We're going to go through enhancements to the tree map. We're going to go to a new feature called explore this data. It's not new, but it's how you access it that's new. There's also going to be about three updates with the semantic model. We're going to talk about the version history that's going to start coming out as well as exploring uh, your data and editing it in the Power BI service, plus the TMDL scripting, and then finally some nice navigational updates within Power BI. This is the place to go to to get all the updates every single month in a condensed format that's gonna give you value. So let's dive into it. Take one second, hit subscribe. Let's go. All right, here we are in Power BI Desktop. The first thing you wanna know is that you're gonna get this file, follow along, you can see all the updates. It's gonna be available in the video description. Click it, download it, go through it. The bottom is gonna be organized for every update. We're gonna hit each update, giving you a condensed version of what was released so you can keep up to speed. So let's dive into it. Uh, and working examples as well. So the enhancements to the text slicer, that's the first thing. If you wanna check this video out, uh, I made one a, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, about the text slicer and how to use it and format it and get deep into that. But uh, the feature was lacking the ability to, to filter on multiple things. So they fixed that. This update's big for that, it's important. Uh, it's a preview feature, so you're gonna want to make sure you go to preview features and enable the text slicer uh, through the options. But then essentially, uh, the, this setup is an example of there's a text slicer I've created. Again, it's the visual that will show up right here, text slicer. And previously, if I wanted to search, say I want to look for the word leafy. Uh, you simply configure this visual to leverage a description field or whatever you want to search for. In this case, it's wine reviews. Download this file, you can scope it out. And it returns it. But the problem is that's where it stopped. So what if you wanted to see something that's maybe, in this case, we're looking at wine, leafy, and we'll say, I don't know, juicy, because I see that word there. Well, now if I hit enter with that, it will continue to filter it, and I'll actually remove that, because that's not as much. We'll do like smoky. I think that one's in there quite a few times. That's not working, classic. Uh, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna go for uh, blend. I see the word blend a lot. So let's type in blend. 68 reviews have the word blend. Blend, 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 keeps on going. It'd be great if this feature comes out uh, to highlight what's in there, because you have to kind of look. I bet that will happen in the future. But then maybe I want to do an additional one, and I'll say red. So now it actually increased. You can see that the views went from 60 to 215, because it's doing a, an or, uh, searching for this. So if it says the word red or blend, it's returning everything. So that's a very important enhancement. It's gonna search for both, or the way you enable it is by going to slicer settings, accept multiple values, click that to on. And you're set. Enhancements to text slicer, that is the feature. Next one, enhancements to tree map. So this one's been around for a long time. The enhancements to tree map, uh, they kind of broke it down pretty detailed, but I will give a quick summary, again, what this is. So if you create tree maps, <clears throat> what that visual does is essentially it's pretty easy to configure. You will have a category. So in this case, it's store region. So there's a bigger region, bigger region, bigger region. And then there's the details uh, where you can then set up the more granular levels. Or even if you don't want to have the category, you can just have the details like so. Uh, however you kind of want to do it. But this update is pertaining to the way that these boxes are organized. So uh, on the left-hand side, we can see that they're squarified, binary, and alternating. You configure these by going, after you create a tree map visual, if you go to the section of layout on the right-hand side, you'll see now that there's a tiling method. You just pick one of these, squarified, binary, alternating. Uh, previously, it was only squarified, and it gives, it gives all the technical stuff here about the aspect ratios and how it chooses what it does. But essentially, it's slight tweaks to the formatting um, with the algorithm for how it moves these things around. So you'll have the squareified tree map. Here's an example of the binary tree map, what that looks like, slightly different. And then the alternating tree map, uh, where you can see it's a rows and columns kind of approach. It kind of stacks it up like mini bar charts. Uh, and then you can control the spacing between groups. So from the bottom, maybe I want to make this real spaced out. 
or I want to uh, not have it closer. You can again control these two things, space in between nodes, which is the nodes, space in between groups, which is the groups, and the tallying method are those new three options. Enjoy. There you go. Uh, the next one is explore this data. So this has been around for a bit, but it's just how you access it that's different. So what you'll see is in this simple page, I just made a line chart kind of like they did. It doesn't matter what it is, but the experience now is what happens after you publish it to the service. So let's go to the service right now. All right, we're in the Power BI service now, and you can see the same file we were looking at, the same tabs, they're all here. Uh, except uh, we're published. And so once you publish it, what this explore data feature now enables people to do is it's uh, enabled on the visual itself. So I kind of like it, I kind of don't, uh, because it gives people the opportunity to really get back into the backend data. It might confuse them, uh, they might start clicking around, but for people who understand the data, it could be helpful. What does that mean? If you click in the top right hand corner of any visual and you go to explore this data preview, what it actually does is it launches the visual and it enables the people to look at the visual itself uh, to see the data behind it. So that's kind of cool if you want to see the detail behind a visual. Um, but then you can also add additional filters. You know, from this, I can filter on date or whatever the end users want to filter on. Uh, the thing that can get a little wild with it, if that simplicity was just contained to that, that's great. But if you get into the visual world, um, maybe we're down here, the users can start changing the visual, but then actually this section where they can look at the whole entire semantic model and uh, start to recreate a visual, they might get click happy and change something up. Uh, and then they could save it as a new report. Again, there's some pros or some cons to it. There's probably additional security that allows you to just have certain features and functionality, but it's important for you to know that this exists. So explore data, Power BI service, check it out. Let's go to the next one. These next updates are gonna be all about the semantic modeling. So there's three of them. Uh, some of them are available right away, some of them aren't. What that means is that firstly, this one can be potentially very cool. So I have another video, if you check it out, around source controlling and how to use and leverage Git to have a fully baked source control system. Inside of, or outside of that, they've been created this functionality to allow semantic model version history in a preview feature essentially keeping up to five years of history for any semantic model you, model you publish. The thing about it is that right now it's not necessarily available for everyone. It seems like it's still being rolled out, but within your service, there are some considerations you need to know that it must be a large semantic model format. It must be in a premium workspace. Uh, it must be enhanced meta format, which is kind of standard nowadays. Um, and then you also need to, uh, you know, have it rolled out into your, your service. So essentially what this says it's going to do, there's an article, you can get more details about it is that it will automatically kind of version the last five versions of any semantic model you publish, uh, which is going to be really helpful when we're uploading PBIXs and you want to just go back, maybe a version cause some error happened. It's a quick way to do that. There's also source control, but that's, what's going on with that. The next one, uh, edit your model in the power BI service updates preview. Uh, so what this does is users can actually edit the data models in the service. I don't like it, uh, because it's still limited features and functionality. Um, but let's go, let's go see what it's all about. So let's go back to the service, the service. We're back in the Power BI service and now we have uploaded that file. So say you're a developer again, Power BI desktop allows you to edit and create and build everything within desktop. They're starting to allow people to just init update it in the service as well. So if you go to the three dots, now you can open the data model here and your changes will be permanent and automatically saved. So you can literally just modify the uh, semantic model in the service with some basic things such as new measure, new column, new table, create new calculations, change calculations. Uh, if you have you know the correct permission on the workspace to be able to build and edit this. So I, I think it's another capability that's you know, beneficial as they're rolling more stuff out. I like the process of having your development contained within Power BI Desktop, but it's important for you to know this feature exists. Check it out. Maybe you like it more. Maybe there's pros to it. So dive into that. We're back in Power BI Desktop now, and there's another feature uh, that you should enable. It will not hurt anything. It's only going to give you more capabilities, and that's the TMDL scripting experience. It's way more for the developer, not a beginner, newbie type of thing, but let's look at it. So go into your options, settings, previews, Enable the TMDL view. Timdal, you know, however you want to say it. 
Uh, essentially, if you're familiar with the source control and the videos I've done in source control, you'll see how they're enabling us more into the back end of these things, altering the JSON files that are created or JSON code that's created that kind of organizes all these things. So after you enable this, what it's going to do is it's going to show a new icon here, Timdal view. And essentially you can try it out now by dragging and dropping things to edit it. Again, there's probably going to be more benefits to this down in the road as the capability exists, but it gets a little, uh, little techie. So say for example, I want to drag a table. I'll take sales trending date. Okay. I just drag that table from the right to the left. I can see all of the backend code for what's happening. So maybe if I wanted to put something in a new folder, I could do that or change the way it's summarizing. I could do that. Um, you can see the actual code and you can change it. So maybe this calculations table, if I just drag this over, You'll see how it's formatting every calculation. You'll see how it's returning every calculation. So it is kind of a nice way to review everything uh, and a real quick from an entire table and then make an adjustment. So say I wanted to say, um, okay, well, let's actually calculate sales, uh, you know, minus one, not really existing, but maybe you had logic you wanted to do. Then you hit apply. It's going to apply it to the model. And now if I go look at my calculations, I just changed, which one did I change? Probably the sales number, I guess. So if I come back to the reporting view, calculation sales, and uh, right there, I changed the sold. You can see now it's minus one. So again, in the Timdall view, you can change uh, calculations. You can change how things are foldered, how things are grouped. Maybe if I pick a different table, again, the sales trending date, you can see that. So that's what's going to allow you to do. Know that's there, check it out, uh, get into it. And finally, uh, just a nice small feature that I like uh, is they've updated the updated the file picker. So it kind of had a, had an old school way of looking through and navigating through files. Now go to show the new file saving experience. And you'll see that when you go to save a copy, it looks more like other Microsoft products with the way the folder structures are working. But even cooler, when you publish, it has a new experience for publishing content where it's going to show all the workspaces and the folders. It's a very uh, great enhancement for the way you operate through Power BI Desktop. Check that out. Overall, these are the key updates for January 2025. Subscribe. You'll get updates every single time something comes out. It's a quick hitter. Uh, you'll have a good one. See ya.